Hello and welcome to Tennis Snacks. And today I'm giving you my top five moves in order to set your game from average to a top level. And I can guarantee that if you're able to dominate these five things, you'll be set for a quantum leap in terms of improving your tennis game. And hopefully that also improve your winning rate, which is kind of big deal. But before we jump into today's video, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you have some questions or doubts, just drop them down on the comment section so I can get back to you. Okay, so number one on the list, use your left hand. So if you're a righty and you're going to do a forehand, you need to make sure that you use your left hand. This is really important. Normally players tend to be focused just on the hand that is holding the racket, but actually the left hand or the hand that is not holding the racket plays a really important role for three main things. One, it helps you to set the racket from the shoulder level, which is really important to start that nice backswing. Point number two, it creates the distance, the ideal distance between you and the ball. So when you have your arm straight, you'll have a better control over your shot and also a better control over the impact point. Because remember, the ideal distance between you and the ball normally is the length of your arm. And point number three, control over the follow through. So when you hit the shot, you're able to catch the racket here with the, the hand that is not holding the racket. And in that case, with the reference of that elbow coming forward, you're able to consistently finish the shot with the most ideal follow through. Actually, I did a video about the importance of the left hand. I'll, I'll leave a link up here so you guys can check it out. Point number two, focus on your opponent. Sometimes players are just too focused in what they're doing and what they're trying to achieve. But remember, tennis is about information. It's about being one step ahead. And if you're not focused on what your opponent is doing, how do you want to be ahead? There's no way around it. So make sure that you can interpret his body language, that you interpret the way that he sets up his shots and try to read the ball from your opponent. Make sure that you connect with your opponent and you just focus more in what he's doing so that you can start being one step ahead. This is very valuable, especially when you're in a match because here's the deal. If uh, he misses a certain shot and he shrunks his shoulders or he nods his head, it probably means that you hit a sweet spot there. Either if it's a backhand or uh, I don't know, or it's like a short ball where he can really get to the ball in a timely fashion way so he can hit, hit the, a proper shot. Well, you guys need to figure it out because throughout the game, your opponent is going to give you multiple feedbacks and that data it's really important for you guys to try and make the best possible decisions point number three the jump step or as lots of people call it the split step i also did a, a video about this the importance of the the jump step i'm gonna put it up here and basically cord that connects you to the ball and to your opponent is the split step or as I like to call it, the jump step, because split step doesn't really have a, a strong relation to action. And especially when I'm coaching like young kids, if I say the word jump, well, it's quite obvious what they're gonna do. So, so I call it the jump step because it's easier for players to understand the concept. The concept is really simple. When your opponent is hitting the ball, you need to be landing, landing from that split step or that jump step. Because here's the thing, if you don't synchronize the landing with his or her impact point, you're gonna get left behind, okay? You're gonna lose that split second, and the split second sometimes is the difference between making a shot. And imagine if it's an important shot, like a match point or a break point, that can set the, the tone of the, of the match. So make sure that you use, please use the split step or use the jump step and, well, try to be one step ahead. One important tip is that normally players are just too flat-footed. Try to make sure that you can lift your heels up so that you can improve your reaction time. Reaction time here, it's crucial, mainly because, once again, if you're playing at a higher pace, higher level, and the balls are coming really fast at you, if you're not on your toes, it's really hard to react in time. Okay, okay, moving down the list, we have number four, learn how to stop. This is something that is probably one of the most valuable lessons. It's, it's really important to know how to run and to know how to reach to certain balls, but the most important thing is knowing how to stop. You need to know how to stop. And knowing how to stop requires lots of technique. And I'll make sure to do a video in the future. And let me know if you guys are interested in learning some techniques in um, how to improve your, your stopping position, because that'll be really crucial to improve your game. You guys need to know how to stop. Why is that? Because when you're going for a striking zone or when you're going for a certain shot, if you're still on the move, you're gonna hurt one really important thing, which is the spacing between you and the ball. And if you're really close to the ball, you really don't have a lot of room to bring the racket forward. 
So if you don't have a lot of room to bring the racket forward, you're gonna hurt your composure. And if you're changing the composure of your shots, well, guess what? Your shots aren't gonna be that good. As once Agassi told us in his autobiography, Open, which I highly recommend it. It's like one of the best pieces of literature. Highly recommend it. It's a, a beautiful book because it really captures what the player is feeling, especially tennis players, because, well, we're alone in, on the court. We don't have any pros like coaching us during the match. We're just out there in the arena. So uh, I highly recommend it to all you guys out there to get that book, which is really, really good. Power move number five. This is the last one on the list. It's about exploring the sidelines. I also have a video up here for you guys to, to watch about this, uh, this really important subject. And what is exploring the sidelines? Well, you can compare this a little bit to, between like WTA and uh, ATP Tour in the sense that you look at WTA matches and most of the shots, they kind of go through the baseline and you, you watch the ATP players and they can explore a bit more the sidelines. I'm not saying that this is 100% this is rigid or like accurate in the, in the terms that, oh no, they, they just play it on. No, I'm just saying that there's a really big difference in terms of how you shape your points if you start exploring the sidelines. This means that the trajectory of your, of your shot is actually crossing the sideline instead of going through the baseline because you're introducing two different dynamics for your opponent to, uh, for your opponent to get to your shot, which is he has to run not only parallel to the baseline, but also he has to move in diagonally. So introducing this different um, angle of, of movement to your, to your opponent will create one really important thing, which is open spaces. And basically what you want to do is to make sure that you can pull your opponent out of the court so then you can explore the empty sides of the court. So first, step number one will be explore the sidelines so you can put your opponent out of the way and then try to go to the empty side of the court. Okay, you guys, this wraps up my top five power moves in order to improve your game. Uh, hopefully this can, can be really useful for you guys because I think that if you're able to manage or master all these five components, uh, which is a lot of work, but I mean, no one said this was an easy sport, I can guarantee that your winning rate will improve. And what's important here is to become a top player. You wanna get detached from all the average tennis players. You wanna be in that quantum leap, okay? You wanna be like the player that has no ceiling. I know we're here indoors and we have a certain ceiling. So picture this, if you don't use those things, that ceiling, instead of being like 10 or 15 feet over your head, is gonna be really close to you. So you wanna make sure that you don't have like certain ceilings and one really valuable lesson that I can give you guys, uh, and this is my two cents on the, on the subject, of course, that all of these uh, things that I'm talking here, it's all subjective to arguments and counter arguments, but this is my personal view of, um, of tennis. I think that the most difficult thing to manage is ourselves, basically because we're our worst enemies in terms of setting ceilings, us and sometimes uh, family members because they want to like be there for you and they want to improve your, your game and want to be like always on top of you like because they want the best for you but sometimes that pressure is already a certain ceiling you don't want to set those ceilings too close to your head because otherwise well let's just put it this way you will not get wings to fly high above all of the average stuff you want to excel you want to be the best i want to make sure that all you guys are in the court and you have that hunger, that drive in order to be better and better every day that you step into the court. So I think that having certain goals, and this is why I think that this list of my top five moves is really is really valuable because it gives you like certain specific goals for you guys to try and achieve in order to improve your game. And hopefully you can start using them and win more, win, win, win. So this wraps up my video for today. Let me know what you guys think. Also hit me down in the comment section if you have any questions about this, this list, I'll happily reply to you guys. Um, and if you liked the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Once again, thanks for watching and keep on snacking.